Something else we'll frequently want to do with our servers is enable virtualization on them. And this is actually really convenient. Virtualization gives us a lot of options for managing our servers and our data centers. In fact, I've been doing this entire series of demos in virtual machines. So it's incredibly useful and helpful. And I've been doing it on a Windows system with Hyper-V as a virtualization platform. Now, Linux has its own virtualization platform, and that is KVM, or Kernel Virtual Machines. So we can install KVM and use a, an Ubuntu system, or any Linux system for that matter, as a virtualization platform. So before we do this, we need to make sure that our system supports virtual processing. And here's the command we can uh, do. It's egrep. Let me get the right thing. Egrep. Egrep. Dash C, which means count. And I want to count references to VMX or SVM. So you'll notice I put those in uh, parentheses and in quotes, separated by that little type character. Uh, I want to count them from proc forward slash CPU info. And you see this returns a four. That basically counts any reference to VMX or SVM, which is my virtual uh, extensions for my processor. So it says basically I have four virtual processors that I can use, which means anything other than zero, by the way, and you support virtual machines. If you have a zero, then you need to enable uh, virtualization in your processor extensions, or you may just be running a system that doesn't have uh, virtualization extensions in the processor, and that you know, would create a major hindrance, like, you know, it wouldn't work. So once I know that I've got it, I want to install what I need for it. So it's sudo apt install, and there are actually several things that I'm going to use here. So I'm going to start with bridge-utils, which lets me do network bridging libvirt, so library for virtualization, dash clients. I'm going to want libvirt dash daemon dash system. And I'm going to want QEMU QEMU, there we go. And KVM. So this is going to install a whole bunch of other things for me. You'll see in the process too. So I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead and do that. And that's going to install the core virtualization platform for me. This will take it uh, just a minute. Now, once this gets installed, we're going to want to check a couple of other things to make sure that we're configured correctly. So this will run as is. But we're going to want to do a couple of other things to give us a little more functionality. Now, one other thing to bear in mind is that at this point, I've been running this entirely from command line. Now I can manage my virtual machines from command line, but frankly, it's not easy. There is a GUI tool, uh, BMM Virtual Machine Manager, that makes it much, much easier. So we'll talk about that in a couple of more minutes. So I want to make sure that I've got a couple of groups here. So they should be set up. Oh, before we do that, let's do a systemctl status and what we want is libvirtv, which is going to be our virtualization platform. And you can see this currently active and running, so great. All right, now I want to check and make sure that there are a couple of groups that exist. So I'm going to cat etc groups, and I'm going to pipe that to grep, and I want to look for KVM, and I want to see that my etc groups is not the right file. That's not what I wanted. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. etc group, there we go. So there we go, I have KVM, and then I wanna see if I have libvirt, and all right, it looks like I have both of those. Now, I also wanna make sure that I have myself as a user to both of those. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do sudo su real quick. So I'm going to have to enter something and I don't want to type sudo every time. So it's user mod add or append group kvm and I want to do my account. And then I'm going to do the same thing for libvirt. Now, if you weren't previously a user of these groups, this will add you. 
If the groups didn't exist, it would be group add that would give you access to it. Now, there is a folder that is going to store all of our images. And that's going to be uh, the var lib libvert images folder. Now, I want to start by changing the group owner to that to KVM. So this is going to be my command change owners or ch own kvm. Actually, let's take a look at this real quick before we do it. So let's do an lsl, and I want to look at var lib lib vert. And here is my images. And you'll see it's owned by root, and you see what the permissions are. So kind of limited. So I'm going to want to add a few more. That's where all of my disk images and things like that are going to go. So I want to change, whoops, I didn't actually type that command, so I can't do it better to get back to it. I'm going to change the owner to, I'm going to do colon kvm and var lib lib vert images. And now if I look at it, you can see the KVM is now the group that owns it. I also want to add my group permissions because right now the owning group only has execute permissions. So I want to add the read and write permissions. So it's chmod, change and modify. And we've got a previous video on setting permissions that uh, I will refer you back to. So I'm going to group, for my group, I want to add the read and what write permissions to var lib I cannot type today libvert images and then if I look at it you'll see that my owning group is KVM and now has read write and execute permissions okay that's what I needed so I'm going to restart my virtualization platform so it's systemctl restart. It's already running. I'm just going to restart now. libvertd. And that should restart. And I should be able to check my, my backspace instead of my down arrow. Status of libvertd. OK, now everything is up and running. Now at this point, I can begin managing my virtual machines using a command line tool. But remember, that command line tool is a little bit challenging. So it's actually not the way I would prefer to um, manage my virtual machines. The command, just so you know, is VIRSH. So VIRSH, and I want to... Okay. Um, VIRSH. Oh, there we go. List. I'm in my VARSH and list my virtual machines. Okay, so from here I can go through and that's the command that I wanted to help. And I can start working with my uh, virtual machines. Now, I really prefer to do it using a command or a uh, GUI utility, but I don't have access to a GUI because this is a server that was installed without a desktop. Therefore, I can't add that unless I can add a desktop environment to my Ubuntu server. That's what we're going to do in our next video.